you ever wonder why you might be scared of killing your houseplants? Afraid that you're gonna fail this little life that you brought into your home? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's okay. And to talk to you about mental health and houseplants. What's up, nature lovers? Um, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kayla, and I talk about caring for houseplants, learning and exploring native plants, and appreciating medicinal plants. So if any of those topics are of interest to you, please consider subscribing. Um, I would really like to try to connect houseplant lovers to the nature that we try to surround ourselves with in our homes. I actually started feeling like this was the next video I wanted to tackle. So I just kind of started thinking about it a lot. And um, I was gonna sit here with some plants to either water or uh, repot um, or pick leaves off of, but uh, I kind of just want to keep it casual and um, we'll see how it goes. I have some notes to follow to try to keep me on track. I'd like to begin by telling you the story of how I ended up with a room full of plants and eventually how I think it benefits my mental health. Um, if you're like me, um, plants make you curious. Uh, if, if you're also like me, you tend to struggle with anxiety and maybe even some depression. Um, I'm a very emotional and intuitive driven person. I was given a gift of super empathy or something. Um, I've kind of come to accept that this is a part of me and um, I eventually had to learn when it was kind of time to step away from listening to the news, you know, beyond what was necessary to know um, before I kind of tend to begin a downward spiral into depression and, you know, a heartache that um, I tend to get. So before I started college, I thought I should be in the business of helping people. I thought social work, you know, um, I was pretty dead set on it. And so I came out with a degree from Ohio uh, in social work. And my internship was actually at a crisis slash suicide hotline. And uh, that's really not a good place for somebody who has a lot of empathy to work at. Um, it was pretty hard not to take that emo emotional burden home with me. Um, I was on antidepressants at the time, and so that kind of helped me keep a little more level, um, but I certainly wasn't like seeking happiness or contentedness. And uh, then I met Drew, my now husband, who has always seemed to manage to keep my best interests on the front burner when I didn't always do that for myself. Um, he was able to pull me away from kind of like a self-sabotaging choice I made by working in such an emotionally draining life lifestyle, I guess. Anyways, Drew and I miss, moved to Michigan about six years ago. I soon got a job as a case manager for a home health care agency, and by this time I was off the antidepressants. I was trying to really come to grips with uh, my emotional burdens or my emotional battles that I was dealing with. But that job, the anxiety that I had over that job was causing me to lose a lot of weight. Um, and we had just gone vegan, so I was already losing weight from that, but the additional anxiety weight loss was was not good. I couldn't eat. Um, food was almost completely unappetizing. And I don't know, There's a, I think there's a lot that goes into why I felt that way. But I, I think it completely threw me off. You know, I was always kind of set on social work and then suddenly I, I couldn't stand the thought of it. You know, I, I was fed up with the way I feel like I had to take on other people's emotions um, or problems, you know. So I quit rather suddenly and uh, found a job at a restaurant for a little while and then I found two part-time jobs at two different libraries. Suddenly I could pick up any book that seemed interesting to me and explore it. Um, I had a lot of tedious work 
And so while I was doing that, I was able to listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts. And I also sat at a computer so I could Google just about anything that they were talking about and visually see it. Um, a lot of plant podcasts and uh, talking about that. But I get ahead of myself. At our last place, we had a visit from my brother-in-law and his family. And he said we should get some houseplants. <laughs> uh, so we went to a local garden center. Shout out to Gray's Greenhouse. And um, it kind of went downhill from there. You know, you, you catch the bug quick. Um, you know, I, I, I liked gardening before that. I've kind of more like gardening where there was a purpose behind it. It wasn't just for the aesthetics. You know, I wasn't going to Home Depot getting stuff. Um, I was going to small garden centers and doing research on plants that I wanted. Drew did the vegetable gardening at the farm, so I decided to get medicinal plants so that I had easy access to plants outside the door. What I ended up finding when we brought house plants in was that I had to learn about them and keep learning about them because there was so much to learn about them. Nothing had quite caught my attention the way plants did. You know, I've tried painting, I've tried reading, you know, not cooking didn't do it for me. I love jewelry making, but it, it didn't quite catch me either. And, you know, being a vegan wasn't my calling. I mean, we still are vegan, but it's not like that's my life's mission, you know. But I absolutely fell in love with plants. So I knew I had to make that pivot. You know, it was definitely an early life crisis, 100%. And uh, I just wish it had caught me sooner, you know? Like, before college would have been great. <laughs> but I'll find my place. I decided to start out by becoming a master gardener. It took a lot of work that first year, but it's a good knowledge basis. It's not always about topics or subjects or plants that I'm interested in, but it's always making sure that I'm learning something from a reliable source and I'm always giving back to the community or the environment every year. Long story short, I was hooked. And um, although it was kind of a mess at the last place with all the plants, uh, Drew was able to contain me to this crazy room that's just absolutely filled and almost bursting. Um, Anyways, yeah, with that story in mind, I guess I just wanted to talk about how plants, and not just house plants, seem like such an important drive for me. You know, I feel like plants make me curious, which gives me a feeling of excitement, which is way better than grief or anxiety. And... I don't know, I'm only impatient because I just want to learn everything and experience everything already. But, you know, it doesn't just happen that way. You can learn a lot from watching people on YouTube and uh, listening to podcasts and stuff. It helps, but you got to have the experience. Most days I make it work. Um, there's a bit of a balance that needs to be done in here. Um, you know, and also about what comes and what goes. You know, it's... Uh, literally a balancing act, sometimes just moving around this room. And uh, honestly, I've killed a lot of plants. And I'll keep killing a lot of plants, and I'll keep letting their pots just sit there until I finally get around to removing it. And the way I kind of think of it is, it's a bit of trial and error. You know, it's about learning what works for you and what doesn't. But, you know, plants are super resilient, you know, and um, so long as you don't have, like, an endangered species in your house, you know, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it. I think if we appreciate the lessons that plants give us and the time that they've given us, I think it would forgive us. <laughs> but, you know, I want you, I want you to slow down. And I want you to enjoy your moments with your plants. It's something that you can nurture and it doesn't talk back. 
as I'm thinking of, you know, a piece lily and my pileas that tend to droop. But um, some plants are more visually vocal than others, I guess. Um, but take moments each week to observe them. You know, look for things like the fuzzy leaves on the plants or the weird crystal-like things that are made of sugar that come out of odd places. Um, new leaves and the crunchy old leaves. You know, our lives demand a lot of us. Um, there's a lot of creativity and thought and problem solving that we have to do daily. And we don't take enough time to quiet down and be in the moment. You know, um, tell me down below if you, you know, have found plants as a way to slow down. But, uh, you know, I have so many plants in this room that I kind of, the amount of time it takes for me to tend to them, it forces me to slow down and uh, be in the moment. It's almost like meditation, it's quieting. I mean, it could definitely get overwhelming sometimes, but it also feels really good to get stuff done in here, you know? It's a balance, and um, so is life. But I also think, you know, houseplants have definitely helped me through the winters. And, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm sensitive to the uh, seasonal affective disorder. And so it can be tough staying motivated. But, you know, the plants kind of forced me into this room and, you know, you can bet I'm, I'm going to be tending to this jungle when the days are still 12 hours long in here. Anyways, I'm also, you know, very heavily drawn to native plants. And there are so many. And um, it proves actually to be a little bit more challenging to source. I think it's a niche, but I also think it's growing. And I think my desire to help those who need help has been heavily drawn towards rethinking our landscapes. By helping the planet, by planting natives, it feels really good. You know, it, it feeds my soul, <laughs> I guess. So I, you know, I really do hope that you come along with me on that journey. Um, because it, it's fascinating um, to learn about the native plants and where they go and seeing life around them. And it's not so self-centered because you are helping, you know, insects and birds and things like that with that. So it is really actually good for your mental health. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm refraining from going on a tangent about bringing nature home right now. Um, I don't think I'll ever be able to go on a long distance hike ever again without always stopping and looking at the plants. <laughs> um, it's kind of like waking up, you know, you just suddenly everything is just so fascinating. Um, and, and all I want is to be able to walk outside my door and, and still feel that way. Uh, let me know in the comments below if this resonated with you at all, or if you're still scared of killing your plants. Um, I have more thoughts on that. Uh, I just wanted to kind of more touch base on what they do for me. Check out my playlist on plant care, so maybe that will help you out as well. <laughs> but also, if you wanted to see more about this plant room, because it won't be here for much longer, sneak peek, hint, hint, uh, more coming your way, um, check out my plant tour, my last plant tour on this video, which I will also link uh, on the screen here. So thank you for watching and have a good one.